Uh, Alright, so, hello everybody, and uh, yes, this is the moment that no one has been waiting for, especially me. Uh, this is the moment where I play Doki Doki Literature Club with an exclamation point. They needed to put that exclamation point on there, it's very important. Uh, and as you can see, I am on the starting screen. Uh, so this is just to let everybody know that this game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Or those who are just disturbed in general, as I have made mention uh, before. Now, before we start, I need to say I'm a little bit concerned about this thing. Not, not for the fact that it's anime and not for the fact that there is reading involved. But I am scared because it is actually classified as a horror game. I saw the tags. And I have heard that that is the impetus of this. And now, I have come up with five theories on why it is labeled a horror game, alright? So, five theories, five theories. We're doing a VG5, which is not a thing yet, but <laughs> we're doing it f specifically for a game uh, before we even uh, play it. Uh, the five theories. Uh, one, that the Literature Club is actually a front for a secret spy ring, likely monitoring our behavior for a government superpower. I think that that makes sense. If you walked into any club, really, uh, you know, if you went into the literature club and all there were were like four uh, girls hanging around, no guys thought to join that club, you'd think something was up. Maybe it's a spy ring. Okay. Uh, second one is that the game is completely different than it appears to be before you play it, having nothing to do with a literature club. Like, literally, when I start the game, everything changes right away. I have a feeling that that might happen, or that it has a lot of different things in it that I didn't plan on being in there. You know? Like, it, it does the whole bait and switcheroo, and that would be terrible. Uh, third one is that the game focuses your attention and then scares you with a shocking image. Like that maze game with the woman screaming at you when you get to the center. Do you remember that from a couple of years ago? It was like you like have to stare really close, and when you get to the center of it, all of a sudden you see... And it like comes out at you, and it's really frightening. And you don't know why they did that, but then you realize, oh, it was, it was a stupid thing to make you look very closely. Uh, four is that the story has a ham-fisted moral lesson that tries to make you feel bad about yourself and the seemingly harmless choices you've made in the game. Boy, I hope that's not going to happen. And then five is that the characters make you care about them in a deep and meaningful way right before tragedy ensues and everyone dies. Uh, now, all five of those could happen. Uh, I'm guessing at least three of them are accurate, but uh, luckily I have a pad of paper here uh, with all of those five. I've got a little score sheet going on here. Uh, so if at any point any of these pop up, uh, I am, uh, I'm going to make some little uh, check marks there and uh, try to keep score, see if, uh, see if any of these bear weight. Okay? Isn't that fun? It is fun. See, we're already having fun. Aren't we? I don't know. Uh, all right, so let's see here. I have never uh, been uh, so terrified to play a game in my entire life, uh, which is so much fun. Uh, and uh, I guess we're going to have to see how that works. Uh, okay. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Great. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing the game. <laughs> for content warnings, please visit... <laughs> okay... By playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you are at least 13 years of age and you consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. Now, you see, I, I did know that already because it even said it in the video. But also, if you think about it, at least 13 years old, that really just means that it's a PG-13 rated game. Sort of like, you know, yeah. So technically, it is like rated T for teen. In many ways. Uh, okay. Dare I?
<laughs> it even makes a happy little agree sound. <laughs> I could just stand here all day. <laughs> oh, Siri. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Okay, fine. Oh, God. Okay, fine. I agree. Okay, Doki Doki Literature Club. Well, there's that musical. All over again. I was really praying that it wouldn't be the same. I wanted it to be different, but... No such luck. It's exactly the same. Okay. Uh, new... Enter my name. My name is gonna be Ash Ketchup. Okay. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. I, I love that I get to be the narrator in my own story. You know the kind of friend you've never seen, you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. One second, I really need to do something. Yeah, we're gonna, we're just gonna turn that, we're just gonna turn the music volume just down a little bit there. Uh, so I don't want to throw my computer at a wall. That's what we're gonna do right there. Uh, okay. Nope, not good enough. We're gonna just have to... There we go. That's better. Just right down there. Yeah, sound volume, I don't know, but music, we're just gonna have to do that. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. Stop living your life for her, dude. Um, but if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. Well, we all make choices. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. I hate myself already. Oh god. Ha! Ah! I overslept. Yes, you did. But I caught you this time. M maybe. Oh, this is me. Uh, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Hey, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's me, Nash Ketchup. <laughs> well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I just don't want to think we're a couple or something. <laughs> no, don't worry about that. Fine, fine. Okay. But you did wait for me after all. Have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. Well, thank you for at least giving the proper response. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled, with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Ash Ketchup, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not interested in joining any clubs. Oh my god, this is me! I haven't been looking either. It knows me so well. That's not true! Damn it. Girls are always trying to get you involved in something. I don't want to be part of your cult. You told me you would join a club this year. Oh, no I did not. Thank you. Did I? Did I really? I'm sure, it's possible that I did. In one many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. <laughs> Say what he likes to worry a little too much about me. <laughs> when I'm perfectly content just getting by on it. One day I'm gonna actually play a game. 
uh, getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Oh my god, I knew this girl too. Well then why don't you leave me alone? Happiness is really important to me, okay. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming Oh, see? Die. That leads me to think that maybe five. Okay. Unexpected tragedy. Let's see. I die at the thought of you becoming a neat? I don't understand that. What's a neat? You trust me, right? If you could explain what a neat is. Alright, alright. Look at a few clubs and makes you happy. Uh, this girl is very clingy. Okay. No promises. Yeah, no promises. That I'll try a little? Yeah, I'll promise you that, sure. Yay. Okay. Why do I let myself get lectured, lectured by such a carefree girl? You know, for a carefree girl, she seems to have an audible lot of cares. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. Well, when people walk all over you, dude. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind a little. At least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. She does not seem carefree. Oh, hey, we're in the classroom. Great. School day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. Oh, we're already done? Okay. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. <laughs> yes, hit me over the head with one. Right now. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. Yeah, we've covered this. But to start with the uh, anime club. No, we don't have to start with the anime club. Sayori must have come into the classroom when I was spacing out. My god, she's stalking you! Look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you sitting here and spacing out, so I came in! Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes! I'm impressed! You have self-esteem issues. Badly. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Which club? Which club is she part of? So I thought, you know, uh, well, that you could come to my club. Uh, yeah! Or, yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Meanie. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Okay, well, I do have to say that the whole thing that it's not actually about a literature club was wrong. So, right now, I don't really know any, if any of my theories are going to hold up. I'm a little depressed by that. Uh, okay. Not that I was ever aware she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99%. Sure, she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Can we move on to the other girls? I don't think I like this one very much. Sayori seems very, um, high maintenance. To put it that way. Since she was the first one to show interest in... Uh, she inherited the title Vice President. <laughs> yeah, that, I gotta tell you, I've been the Vice President of some clubs. That's pretty much what happens. <laughs> you just end up there. Well, you're not really qualified to be the president of the club. But we do need a Vice President, you know, in case something tragic happens to the person at the top. So, tag. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. <laughs> Ash, Ash Ketchup is funny! Why do you care so much? I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member, and Natsuki made cupcakes in it. Which one's Natsuki? One of them. Is that the one with pink hair? Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or she's as cunning playing this all out. Okay. I, I let out a long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? A cupcake? 
Yes, on promise of cupcakes. I shall go to said club. That's what I'm going to do. All right, everybody. Now I get to actually, and and that and thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I do have to say that some of this, some of this writing does remind me of like the Buffy the Vampire style Joss Whedonish dialogue, uh, and and some of it seems way too anime for me. Ejectedly followed Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. Well, I guess I get to meet Charlie's Angels. Okay, uh, I told you, don't call me a new member. Girl One. You have a weird name, Girl One. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always want, always says nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a boy? I didn't ask to come here, man. Uh, way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Ash Keshav, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. Yeah, me too. Is it is full of incredibly cute girls. I think I know why they didn't want men around. They knew this would be the reaction. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. Good comeback, Ash Ketchup. Natsuki. Hmm. Oh, well, now at least we know her name. Natsuki. Hmm. I was right. Pink hair. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I didn't, I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. That's kind of insulting. Uh, she is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Done. Sayori says that quietly in my ear, then turns her. You can ignore her. Done. Then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Uh, don't say things like that. Okay, so, uh, purple hair, pink hair, and that one, who I just, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Uh, okay, and it sounds like you already know Monica, I do. Hi, Monica. I, I technically don't know you. It's great to see you again, Ash Ketchup. Monica smiles sweetly. Yep, there it is. We do not know each other well. Well, we really talk. We rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. My god, they talk so much! Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Yep, that, that'll do it. Basically, completely out of my league. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Y you, you two... Oh, I can do this sadly. I can do this very, very earnestly. Y you too, Monica. You're pretty. All right. God, that took me back to a bad place. Come sit down, Ash Ketchup. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. Oh god, now I have to make a choice. I'll get the cupcakes. Well, I think we already determined Monica's the one that's out of my league, right? So, I guess I want to sit next to Monica because the pressure is off. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. It has been widened so there's one space next to Monica and one next space next to Sayori. Hmm. 
Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrap tray and Yuri opens the closet. Can I sit in the closet? I take a seat next to Sayori. No! No! Sit next to Monica! I didn't even get to choose! Natsuki proudly marches back to the table tray in hand. Okay! That's a lot of A's. Okay! Are you ready? Ta-da! A woo ha Get to do So if you listen to the foil after a uh, uh, fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. Oh uh, yeah, when I when I think about something wonderful I'd like to eat, I think of cats. It's great. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. Oh my god. This is like a Sailor Moon acid trip. Um, okay. I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. Well, you know, just hurry and take one. I, I guess I have to. I mean, I'm not watching my figures. Um, Sayori grabs one first, then Monica, and I follow. Sayori talks her with her mouth full, and has already managed to get icing on her face. This is a horror game. Maybe it's just that I'm horrified that I have to read so much. They're, they're, I'm, I, I'm, I'm scared by the unknown and also of what's actually known. Looking for the best angle to take a bite, Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Nope. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I don't care. Icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? Uh, I thought you technically did. I'm getting to the point, hopefully, where I get to actually make some sort of choice. But not for, you know, you dummy. Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. Oh my god, is this just Tea Time the Simulator? I, <sighs> I'm not even looking at tea. There's no tea visible. Just show me the cupcake. I want the cupcake. Just show me the little... You don't have to describe it. Just show me the cupcake. I, uh, teachers gave us permission to... The teacher gave you permission to have tea. Wow, real permissive school. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I guess. Uh-huh, don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might be a pastime for me, but at least enjoying tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. It's been 20 minutes. I haven't gotten to a thing to do. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So what made you consider the literature club? I didn't have a choice. That's what made me consider the literature club. I literally didn't have a choice. I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here. So, that's okay. Don't be embarrassed. Too late. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Well, you better try harder, Monica, because ain't happening right now. Monica, I'm surprised. Me and my character are having some tonal problems here. How come you decide to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. <laughs> Not that I'm slighting your literature club. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. <laughs> Damn, I know, right? I'm glad I'm in a non-political club like literature. No one has opinions on literature. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. And luckily here, we already made the tea and cupcakes, so no problem! 
I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And then, and if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Also, I like literature, apparently. That's also the takeaway. Monica really is a great leader. And Yuri nods. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Why don't you just tell all the guys that there are cute girls in the literature club? You'll have so many members! It must be hard to start a new club. Could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Yeah, well, there are doers. And there are joiners. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work to convince people that they're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, such as like festivals, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! Do our best. You know it. Alright, so... I guess, along with the help of these four, we're gonna... We're gonna grow a literature club together. The stakes have never been lower in history. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. No. No, I can honestly, I can tell you right now that is not the case. I am not agreeing. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. They really aren't all that different. They even kind of look the same, if you actually... I guess they're di- well, the hairstyles are different. So there's that. They're different heights. Maybe that's why they're also delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. I'm... I'm bored. Can I do something now? What kinds of things do I read? Uh, considering I really don't have a good way of... Manga? Uh, Natsuki's head perks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Let's see. Yuri traces the ring of the key cup and says, My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. Okay. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling the, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to turn that music volume down a little bit more, because, yeah. You know what? We're going to turn that sound volume down just a little bit, too, there. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. Yeah, people suck. I, I, yeah, I mean, I get it. I, I see where you're coming from. Books. Books don't talk back. They kind of get a little preachy sometimes, but, but you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Foreshadowing! Okay. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. Desperately grasp something I can relate to at a minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. I think I'd be more interesting than a rock. No, that's backwards. Really, I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you, I guess you could say that. Do you need time alone? I can go off to a different club and just let you guys deal with whatever's going on here. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. <sighs> what What is going on here? I am so confused. Uh, I hate horror. You know what, Natsuki? 
I'm with you on that. I, I feel the same way. Oh, why is that? Well, I just dart over me for a split second. Never mind. Was I the monster the whole time? That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you? What? Look, you left a piece of scrap paper. Oh my god. I was working on a poem. Uh, don't say it out loud. No, don't, don't do that. And give that back. Fine. Your cupcakes, your poem. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. I don't know. Those cupcakes that had, like, the, the candy ears? Man. I'm all over that. Add chocolate ears. Sayori sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulder. I'm not cute. I never understood that whole thing where, like, your mouth's open, but you have, like, that one little tooth, like, all of a sudden you turned into a vampire who just had dental surgery. And why, like, your eyes just all of a sudden become, like, less than and greater than symbols. Like, it's almost metaphorical. If anyone knows, and they're watching this, so, um, hi Jan, uh, Jan, or whoever it is. Hi Paul. Just random names. Uh, if you could, if you could tell me why. I guess it's stylistic. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, I think that's impressive. No! I write poems for myself, I'm a true artist. Ah, uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sure you do. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. Got nothing. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? This is like the first game I didn't actually have to play. It's a reading simulator! I've heard of walking simulators! Just did a video on that. But a reading simulator, that's even better! That even takes less effort! I could even hit a little auto! Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Ah, I wanted to read everyone's poems. Okay, I have an idea. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's go. Let's all go home. I love this idea. Let's all just go home now because we've done nothing and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, uh, everyone is even. Yeah, let's do it. I love how the club's only action they've taken so far is deciding all in favor of going home. I... This is a very productive club. Now, now that we have a new member, I didn't agree. Just for the record, I think that it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Yes, it's going to strengthen the bond of the club if we spend less time together and go home to our individual houses. Isn't that right, Ash Ketchup? Hold on, there's still a problem. Yes, Avatar, what is the problem? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. You go, Ash Ketchup! You go! I said it, now you said it. The game knew. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at. No, you don't. You do not have any other clubs that you're going to look at. I lose my train of thought. Derailed. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. Damn it, fine, I'll join your club. But I'm sorry, I thought 
Hmm. Oh, man. They're gonna make me join this damn club, aren't they? You all... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? Well, we could just do that thing where we said we'd all go home. That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. No one said they had to be good, dude. I mean, they could, they could, the poems could suck. I mean, it's a literature club. It's not a, it, it's, it's not for, you know, literal prodigies. It's, oh, okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. Yay. They're all happy again. Yes, I'm so happy! And she wraps her arms around me. You really did scare me for a moment. Well, you like horror, so that's what I'm gonna make us super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. <laughs> we didn't accomplish anything. Let's end the meeting. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment, which was... Anybody remember... Write a poem to bring to the next class. And she looks me over. And uh, I look forward to seeing how you can express yourself. No, you don't! Uh, can I really impress the class star, Monica, with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm not going to. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Ash Ketchup. Uh, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, say, uh, never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Oh, well then this is even better. We get to walk home together. Sure, might as well. I love the enthusiasm Ash Ketchup shows for this. Okay. So, I want to make it very clear. This, I've, I've been at this for over a half hour. And I have literally not had to make a single choice yet. Um, overwhelmingly positive response. With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. And all I've really learned so far are basically their names and that there is a literature club. And that I had no choice but to join said literature club. It would have been hilarious if there was a thing at the beginning of this game that says, Would you like to join the Literature Club? And you just hit no. And the game just ends. That would have been terrific. I would have done that. This would be a very short stream. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki. Uh, th thank you for giving me a little bit of a, of, of a, you know, a Cliff Notes version here. Yuri. And of course, Monica. Oh, of course, Monica. But she has a natural hair color. You can't go with that. You have to be looking at the ones that dared to defy logic. Go with pink and purples. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Well, my history says no. No, you will not. But, uh... You know, uh... Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer. I'll need to make one of them. Starts with writing a poem tonight. Oh my god, do I actually do something? Oh! Oh, yes! Mark it on your calendar! I actually get to do something in Doki Doki Literature Club! Oh my god, I'm so excited! Okay. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Uh, something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. They stab me and I die and I don't have to be part of the literature club. So, um, what? Um, okay, uh, what do I want? Of course, they finally give me a choice, and I don't know what to pick. Um, I am going to... Let's see, this is supposed to be a horror game, right? Somehow? It's supposed to be a horror game, I guess. 
So I am going to pick the scariest word I can find. Uh, disaster, sadness, variance. Variance is a pretty scary word. Peaceful. Yeah, what are they up to? <gasps> Marshmallow. There we go. Because I thought of the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man for a second. Okay. Scariest uh, word in here. Special. Socks, dance, blanket, heart, climax. Uh, lipstick. Um. Uh, uh, oh, dance. Dance is very scary. Just for the record. Especially if you can't dance. Inferno. No, not scary. Effulgent. Scary because... I'm still trying to remember what effulgent means. Don't remind me. It's not important. Clumsy. Prayer. Insight. Breathe. Tragedy. Well, see, tragedy would be the easy one. Boop. I hate getting my nose booped. Uh, explode. Too easy. Dark. No. Secretive. Analysis. Wrath. Rose. Promise. Yes, I hate keeping promises. Cheeks. Flea. Dazzle. Beauty. Alien. Heartbeat. Uh. Suicide. Too easy. Ambient. Hair. <laughs> These are weird. Uh. Cheeks. Flea, dazzle, bedazzle, ambient. Oh, ambient. Ambient is the scariest word because I do a lot of audio editing. And ambient noise is, is evil. Okay, incapable. Frightening. Mm, no. Frightening is not the most frightening word. No. I'm, I'm, I'm going to find something else. Candy. Because candy has a lot of sugar. Um, uh, waterfall. Waterfall is the scariest word, and I'm going to justify that because you should not go chasing waterfalls. Uh, depression. Email. Awesome, silly, just a laugh, turn. Yeah. Email. Email is the is the scariest word. It's taken down presidential candidates. Let's just get rid of that one. Um, existence whirlwind flying. Doki doki. Oh well. Doki Doki is the scariest word here. Don't even have to look any further. Uh, let's see. Scariest word here for me is going to be... Uh, 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 um, uh, essence, vibrant, parfait, eternity. Cute. Because this game is supposed to be cute. Okay, incongruent. Incongruent is probably this. Uh, heaven sent, loud grief, giggle, sing, sing. Incongruent is the scariest word here. <laughs> okay, um, family romance. Family romance, graveyard meager. <laughs> don't don't like try to pair these words up with each other. Anger, hopeless, forgive, milk. <laughs> forgive milk! I love <laughs> Lucky Adventure! Anger, hopeless. Family graveyard, anger, forgive, lucky. Romance, meager. Hopeless milk adventure. Hopeless milk adventure is, is the best sporadic poem. Um... Okay, I am going to say that the uh, scariest word, because that is my theme, scariest word in each thing, is uh, going to be um, milk. Because if you're lactose intolerant, uh, milk is the scariest thing to match. I am not, but uh, sometimes I am afraid that I am. Anxiety, Ribbon, Landscape, Fester, Tenacious D, Tenacious D, Infinite Anime, scariest thing there, uh, Holiday, Portrait, Wonderful, Aura, Pain, Shopping, Terramage, Terramage, 
Papa or a portrait. Terra Ma No. No. Um Wonderful. Wonderful is the scariest word. Kawaii? Mouse, sparkle, nature, happiness. Oh! Um, sparkle is the scare. No! No, sorry. Time. Time waits for no man. Therefore, is the scariest thing. Headphones, bubbles, captive. Uh. Captive? Horror. Horror is not the most horrific uh, thing here. Chocolate? Oh no, chocolate's terrific. Destiny? Oh, because Destiny's Child. Can't do that one. Headphones. I'm wearing headphones right now, I'm not scared of those. Uh, infallible. Oh yeah, you can justify so many terrible things with infallible. Uh, Firefly, lust, disarray, vivacious, pleasures of the universe, covet. Vertigo. Oh yeah, if you've ever had vertigo, it's a scary thing, dude. Uh, agonizing melancholy during Jumpy Kitty. Jumpy Kitty? Oh, I want to pick Jumpy and Kitty. Determination, broken, alone. Wow. These are not pleasant. Um, the scariest thing here is, uh... Jumpy? Melancholy. Melancholy is the scariest thing. Alone is it, alone is good. I, 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 more and more, I want to actually make that reality. But melancholy, uh, no, no. Love is the scariest thing. Love is the scariest thing, because then you have to care. And caring is hard. Now, see, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the rest of these options, but the second I saw Poof, I'm like, yeah. Uh, okay, we are looking at uh, Entropy and Death. <laughs> Question. Together, Peace, Unstable, Entropy. And last one. In my 20 words of happiness here. Fickle clouds, misfortunate, extraordinary, unrestrained, uncanny. Um, fear, music, and comfort. Uh, the scariest thing should be fear. But uh, it is New Hampshire and it is winter. The scariest thing. Because they bring snow and ice and it will destroy you. Oh, this one again. Hi again, Ash Ketchup. Good to say uh, you didn't run away on us. Well, I mean, I had so much fun picking out words. This might be a little strange, but at least I keep my word. I'm back at the literature club. Yeah, fully aware was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. <laughs> Just like every social situation I've ever been in. Thanks for keeping your promise, Ash Ketchup. Hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Yeah, so far I've had to pick out 20 whole words. I'm so... It's too much. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. I didn't even write the poem, I just picked out words. Come on, he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. Well, and this one's been so fun so far. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to uh, just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for some... Oh, snap! Monica bringing it! Have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in her club in the club room. That's a guilty face right there. I hate to tell you this. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! I don't like this girl. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. 
Don't worry, guys. Ash Ketchup always gives it his best, as long as he's having fun. So I'm not. He helps with busy work, even without me even asking. Like cooking and cleaning my room. You clean her room? This is a very strange relationship you have with Sayori. Sayori, that's just because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? It's apparently I remember it better than you do. You two are really good friends, aren't you? Yeah, well, you know, stopping your house from burning down really does, you know, strengthen the bonds of friendship. Might be a little jealous. How come you and Ash Ketchup can become good friends, too? No. No, I'd really prefer we didn't, to be honest with you. Um... As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she's put me into. Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait. Don't be shy. It's really tough. Sorry if I'm moving through text a little fast now, but like, I'm, I'm even starting to get bored. So I can't imagine how watching this must feel. What is it? Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Um, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. Guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Where'd your eyes go? Oh god, your eyes are gone. This is where this is where it gets real, folks. I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. Uh, so any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Uh, we'll make a big deal if you don't want it to. Alright, well here, Yuri reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so you should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. Oh my god, is there a mini game where I have to read a book? And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. How is this girl accidentally being so cute? I don't know if it's accidental, dude. I... She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. How does she know what book you'll like? She literally has no information about you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. No, you don't. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. I expected Monica to kick off the scheduled activities of Claude, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. No, it's not like we actually ever sit down and talk about books or writing or anything, because that's what a literature club would do. Screw that. We're just, uh, oh. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Well, see, somebody actually knows what we're supposed to be doing here. Of course, I have no visual to show that. It's just a classroom, an empty classroom. Can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. What's in the closet? A sigh from within the closet seems to be annoyed. She is not at all carefree. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Oh, look, we're at the closet now. You looking for something in there? Love how interactive this room is. I can literally just look from one side of the closet to the other, motionless. Freaking Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. You keep your stuff in the closet in a classroom? What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just going to mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked boxes and boxes, books and boxes across the shelf. Manga! You read manga, right? Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Manga's one of those things that you can't admit you're really into. 
it until you figure out where the other person stands. Uh, yeah, no, I can. I'm not. How did you know? Uh, I heard you bring it up at some point. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, there's a lone volume of manga uh, amidst a stack of books on a curious Apollo stack. There it is. He snatches it out of my hand and then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. That's much better. Seeing a box set in one book is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box she, uh, set she's admiring. Parfait girls. A series I've never heard of in my life. Probably means it's either way out of my demographic or simply terrible. <laughs> uh, she points to the classroom door. I wasn't judging anything. It was the tone of your voice. My tone or my character's tone? Both. But I'll tell you one thing, Ash Ketchup. Consider this lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. Hey, it had book in it! That's as close to an actual literature club thing as we've done so far. And we're on day two. Pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah! I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking anim animated feminine poses. Wow. This is like bookception. Because it's exceedingly mo. Don't just stand there. I'm just trying to figure out what mo is supposed to mean. Manga operating expressively? Sure. Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. Wait, I was in the closet? I thought I was just closet adjacent. I was in a closet with a girl? Is everyone... Is everyone aware of that? Okay. I wasn't. Because they, they don't actually... Sh I just... I see a closet open. I think I'm it looking in at the closet. She takes a seat against the wall beneath the window sills. Oh, good view. Pats, she pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We, we can't read at the same time like that. Why's that? Uh, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. Don't just say that. You make me feel weird about it crosses her arm and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I I literally have not done anything, so, like, all of my interaction with you right now is pre-scripted. Didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her, either. Not that I would really have an option to. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki, once again, inches closer, reclaiming the additional space. While she hopes I won't notice, I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Yep, that sounds about right. <clears throat> wow, how long has it been? Since I read the beginning? You don't go back and flip through older volumes every now and then? <sighs> I'm not even reading a book, I'm reading about reading a book. Fuck you, Alex. Fuck you, Alex. Spend an hour. An hour. I'm reading about reading. This is litception. Doki doki seption. Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've finished, I finally know why this is considered a psychological horror. Hey, are you paying attention? 
Nothing interesting is happening, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like they're about a bunch of friends in high school. The book is us! That's what the book is. Typical slice of life affair. Since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Yeah, I know the feeling right now. I know the feeling. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be a plot? Apparently not. Uh, apparently not. Well, obviously. Yeah. Didn't anyone watch Lost? You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? <laughs> Millions of people did. Well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy in an ice cream shop. Yeah, that is pretty hilarious. But that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Oh, no. There's drama, and then the ice cream goes flying across the room, and the guy's like, whoa? That's literally a line of dialogue in this so-called book. Like when uh, they get into all their backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen, that's really what makes it so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking Secret Spy Ring. Uh... So far, the uh, not like advertised thing is uh, not not bearing fruit. This seems exactly the way I thought it was going to be. Um, it has not had any shock scares. Uh, it does not seem to have any moral lesson or or really a lesson in general. And it, if there's any unexpected tragedy, it's that uh, it's been an hour, and I've my only interaction with the game is that I've chosen 20 words from a notebook. And I also love that they're talking about a book that's basically, you know, um, a direct correlation to what I'm going through right now. There are so many touching parts. Sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. Hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? Ooh, yeah. What sound is UWA? Ooh-ah! Hoo-ah! There we go. Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just meant that I haven't yet seen you at your full power. <laughs> no, we haven't gone Super Saiyan yet. We're still, we're still working on it. Hmph. <laughs> Good save. I hope Super Saiyan's a thing. I never saw a Dragon Ball, but I, I thought that that was a thing. Is it a Kamehameha wave? This chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Oh god, I'm reading a cookbook. Well, Natsuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. That it's a cookbook? Yeah, why does that matter? It doesn't, I'm just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? Yeah, that's just a coincidence. Oh my god. Okay, so I've determined that the girl that lives next to me is really high maintenance. And this one is just really odd. I don't get... She, she likes anime about baking. It's a very specific thing. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. <laughs> I picked up a manga that was that had baking involved. And go figure, I got into baking an anime manga thing. I feel bad for anyone that's impressionable. Yeah. 
I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Why did your head get, like, so big? I finished a couple chapters at this point. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? Yeah, okay. And they're talking, and they're talking. I guess it's fun sharing something new. You know what I mean? Uh, God, your eyes just got like 16 sizes larger, too. Why are you sitting on the floor? I think we've already established there's like a hundred chairs in this room. Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. I'm sorry. Like, I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. Uh, I can't even bring it up without them all like, Hey, you still haven't grown out. Makes them want to... Makes me want to punch him in the face. Yeah, you know what? Underground Lit Club Fight Club? F Fight Club was a book, too. This is Chuck Palahniuk's Literature Club. Err, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I've al I'm already kind of a loser... So I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. Oh my god. It's probably harder for someone like you. Damn, I could have been playing so many things right now. <sighs> but I'm reading about how people are depressed and think they're losers. That's pretty great. I mean, I did get the SEO collection. Still haven't finished Final Fantasy 15. I was thinking about finishing the campaign for Battlefield Hardline, and kind of froze up on me there. So I. So I guess there's that. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. I wonder how long this music loop goes for. Well, it's not like that solves any problems, but at least you're enjoying yourself, right? So is my goal to make all of them leave the literature club and stop this foolish activity? Are you gonna keep reading, or what? I flipped the page. I totally forgot that happens. Minori is my favorite character. Oh god, now I have to f memorize other characters? You always feel a bit bad for her since she's so unlucky. Especially bad when... I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish the chapter. <sighs> Stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. <sighs> okay. Tea helps. Being able to provide, I, I, real, there should be a drinking game around this. I don't know what the drinking game would be, but there should be. Okay, everyone, are you all ready for today's poems? Oh hell yeah, I'm ready for today's poems. Are you kidding me? I have been waiting for this all day. Let me guess, do I have to click through the poem reading part, too? Monica, that is just a really strange way to stand for ex extended periods of time. You notice she hastily slides herself a good twinch away from me. Wow, you're striking out with girls, and I don't even have to do anything. This is great. This is the most passive way that I've made girls disinterested in me. And it's terrific. <laughs> this, this, this is the lazy man's way to lose women. Uh, you're just giving it back. Don't you want to know what happens? 
Uh, yeah, but Monica just said, don't be dumb. Take it home with you. Yeah, take it home, because apparently all we ever do is just go home to accomplish things. It's like a homework club. <laughs> I love homework club. Just finish that one before tomorrow, so we can start the next one. Oh, God. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you. So is that a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face? Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Oh, I don't think you're going to have much choice, my friend. I think that's going to be necessary. And uh, carefully slip the book into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, I did. I wrote a pretty awesome poem. It's the scariest poem ever. I couldn't really find much inspiration, since I've really never done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Yeah, let's actually do something that moves the story along. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poem. Uh, so he's on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf, torn from spiral notebook. Oh, that's kind of like the one that I apparently wrote in. And on the other hand, Monica put her in a, in a thing. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting. Alright. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh, well, you know, since she's already out of my league, I guess, you know, pressure's off. I'll show it to Monica. I should start with Monica. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yesterday, she seemed eager, and I really want uh, to, her to know that I am putting in effort. I didn't, but let's pretend I did. Hi, Ash Ketchup. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Oh, by the way, can I see that poem? Since you're new and everything... If you have any suggestions like new activities or just activities because I don't think we've actually done anything yet or things we can do better. Yeah, actually do things. Could we do that? I'm always listening. Okay. I'd like to actually discuss literature in the literature club and if I could get like a large fries and if I could supersize it. Hello? Hello? Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Is there a part where I can actually leave comments? Like, like one of those little suggestion boxes that you see in stores? I want a suggestion box for the game. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm, I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway... Yeah, I want to share the poem. Let's move it along. Let's get to the poem part. Do they actually generate a poem? I hand Monica my poem. I like it. <laughs> it's a lot cuter than I expected. Man, no one ex understands my artistic vision. That was dark, and gritty, and scary. And they say it's cute. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. Just take that as a compliment. <laughs> By any chance, have you read anything? By Shel Silverstein. <laughs> yes. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in, in a few simple words. Yep. His poems can be funny, daring, or even sad. And sometimes, they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids. But if you think about them, they can express view, views of the world that would apply to anybody. 
Okay, so probably gonna find fillers in your poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So you can see why uh, it would be the your your kind of poem to explore. I'll I'm sure I'll end up trying different different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. Yeah, you really gotta get like your head space correct before you attempt to do, you know, Shell Silverstein. You gotta know what you're in for, my friend. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. I'll always help you find what suits you best. Don't force yourself to write things, and you're still talking. And, uh, no, I'm totally listening to you. Do you want to read my poem now? Uh, don't worry, I'm not very good. Sound pretty confident for someone who doesn't sound... That's because I have to sound confident. That's right, I have to sound confident. I don't cry, don't cry. Oh, did anyone see Jumanji? Don't cry, don't cry. That doesn't mean I always felt that way. Uh, let's read it. Hole in Wall. Okay, I'm going to try to do a dramatic reading of this poem. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes? A, a noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home! I peer inside for a clue. No! I can't see. I reel. Blind, like a film left out in the sun, but it's too late. My retina's already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. <gasps> it's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices, I realize now. That I wasn't looking I was looking out, and he, on the other side, was looking in. How was that? My Shakespearean training's really paying off now. What do you think? It's very freeform. I'm not the right person to ask for feedback. I like I don't even have to make a choice of, of what my feedback is. That kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. You should meet Moxie Havoc. She's great. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. And what was the inspiration behind this one? I put words on a page. I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. My epiphany? The world is meaningless, and I am but a speck in the greater thought of the universe. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes, when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets to fixate on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper, and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. That is true. Depending on what pen you're using. So just move your hand, and go with the flow. Maybe it doesn't even have to be words, or even letters. At least you've scribbled something on a page, and that's how writing works, yay! That's my advice for today. Boy, Monica, you're great. I'm so glad that you're the president of my lit club. Oh my god, please tell me I don't have to go through all of these. Oh my god. do 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 I just like the sounds. Can I just keep doing the sounds? 
da 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 Oh, that reminds me of Mario. I want to play Mario right now. Alright, fine. Um, let's talk to the goth girl, uh, Yuri. Hi, Yuri. You'll appreciate this, because I think that we can all agree that it's like the darkest and scariest poem. Uh, a minute passes. Um, sorry, I forgot to start speaking. Okay, what do you think? It's fine. It's not... I just need to put... I just need to put my thoughts into words. That's how talking works. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Nothing begins with that and ends well. Why do you ask? I'm, I guess that it might be after reading through this. It's that bad. No. Did, you, did I just raise my voice? Buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. Um, I get it. She's shy. Okay, let's move on. Did you like my poem? Right, um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. I don't know what you're talking about. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notice noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Vinishes her train of thought as it's as if her demeanor really changes. Her staring is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them. But getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I will give them this. They are very, very supportive in this club. And, and have a lot to say about, uh, you know, improving your writing style. Maybe this should be for, like, kids younger than 13. They could learn a lot about writing. I say that not knowing how this ends. This probably ends horribly. I don't know. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. I feel like I got some very valuable feedback. But I'm sure you have a poem that you'd like me to read. At some point. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, or me, or to Natsuki. I don't know either, but it does seem like that structure is also weakening the overall subject matter of what you're saying. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. Okay. Alright. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Shakespeare voice time. Ghost under the light, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening green-blue hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past, the light flickers, I flicker back. Check, please. Um, alright, uh, that was terrific. I'm sorry I have terrible handwriting, I could read it. Uh, well, I, I just don't read script very often. You don't do much of anything, do you, Ash Ketchup? Uh, I was, it wasn't too short, I usually write longer poems. Glad you like it. Since this is our first time sharing something easy to digest, you're into ghosts. The story isn't about ghosts at all, that's symbolism. You're not too smart, are you? 
my character. <laughs> uh, okay, but remember that poems often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. Uh, they usually do more than tell a simple story. Well, it makes me happy. Just remember, it won't be too long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, it's kind of hard to miss it with all the reading. Maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. I... Uh... I don't even remember which one's which. It is the the um the one with the pink hair is Natsuki, right? I guess we'll find out. Yep. Good. Cheers. All right. Let's start with some things I don't like. <laughs> 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 I always love conversations to start. Let me tell you what I don't like about this. First of all, um, Natsuki rereads my poem. Never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Oh, thank you for telling me the things you don't like, but not actually telling me. Then I mean, what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Oh god, other things? That sounds pretty sweet right now. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's why I have my own writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours, like Monica said. Well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. Oh, you were supposed to be show me some dumb poem and make me go, Ha, oh, well, it's great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. Ow. You went and ruined it. <laughs> Sorry, I excelled where you thought I would fail. You're saying you liked it? Natsuki's retort gets caught in your throat. You're so... You just... You do not understand anything, do you? You're not... You're not the boss of me. You don't know me. You don't know my life. I already told you that. You don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. I mean, I got dreams too, man. I don't... Pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Suki must really hate me or something. Or she's just jelly. I think she's just jelly. Uh, I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. Yeah, dude, I don't even know what your poem is. Only because Monica will move me if I don't. Alright. <clears throat> Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Moving on. Yeah, I told you uh, that you weren't going to like it. Wow, you uh, you should get a job as a psychic. I like it. Just to be honest, I am. Why are you so convinced that you wouldn't? I wouldn't like it? Because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff, so people don't even take my writing seriously. It's okay. You're halfway to Dan Brown territory. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. She's sassy. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening, so I decided to write about it. Um, but the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. 
like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose, helps bring out the feeling of the last line. Is this supposed to be an actual writing class? I... I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it meant to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? No. And, uh, you know, the more you know. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Oh, gee, my options are so varied at this point. I guess I'll try to give it to... The Man in the Closet! Oh, there's no man in the closet. Fine, I'll give it to Sayori. Uh, this one again. She starts her sentence with three dots. This is a good poem. Are you sure it's your first time? Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? I guess you're right. No, I have nothing better to do. Maybe play soccer or something. I should have, uh, I should have really looked at my other options for clubs. Yep. Realizing the problem is that I really should have uh, checked out some more clubs before really hitching my wagon to this one here. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, I was afraid that uh, you wouldn't do it seriously. Do I need to do character voices for all of them? Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that you wrote one. Just reminds me of how you're really a uh, part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before. Calm down. You're not selfish at all. Trying new things like this for other people, that's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. No, she's not. I feel like I was forced into this and I am not happy, knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here. That will be my way of thanking you. Well, you better start trying harder, because it ain't happening yet. All right, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Tilde! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through the blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Sayori, this is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. A little bit. Can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that made... Well, you know, at least she's going with her character. I still tried my best. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast! Oh my 
my god, stream of consciousness is your entire life! Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. <laughs> I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Yay! This was... this was fun? Yeah! Next time, I won't forget, I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Phew, I guess that's everyone. Oh my god, are we finally through day two of Lit Club? I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems could stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I mean, the stakes are pretty high. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. You could just say, there are girls in the room. And we wouldn't have to go over their names every five seconds. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh, did you say something? No, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute. Oh my god. Frenemies. Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? <laughs> no, I got as much symbolism from that poem as I could have hoped for. It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. Yep, having that feeling right now. How could that be cute? I, I, I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice, and you meant to say, trying to come up with something nice to say, and, um... Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Uh, I do have a couple suggestions. Oh my god, now I have to listen to the su suggestions they have for each other? Would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way! Sayori liked it. Sayori likes everything. I did not admit to liking it. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, I'm really opinionated. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. And also, pretentious. So, pretentious and opinionated. This is going real well. Is there an option to leave the literature club? Is there a place I can go? Can I sign a thing and say I waive my position on the board, which I didn't know was a thing? I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mm. So the literature club just literally started, right? So, so they have no idea about like their individual styles or anything. This is I, I'm coming in as fresh as anybody. <sighs> Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Oh, damn. Yeah, Yuri, what up with that? That's not what I, uh, you, you're just, Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Ash Ketchup appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? You're full of yourself. Wow. I think this is why they don't allow boys in literature club. You put one in there and all of a sudden it just destroys. This is, this is like, I'm breaking up the Beatles here. Why? I don't, I am so sorry, literature club. I have caused chaos where once there was none. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. <laughs> Well, there's no fear of that. Natsuki's got that covered, right, Nits? 
Right, Nat? I'm gonna call you Nat now. And Sayori, you're Riri. Okay, Riri. Is everyone okay? Yeah, Riri, we're good. Just, uh, Nat and you, Yo-Yo, you, whatever your name is, we're just having a little thing here. Uh, I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew as since that sketch of started showing up. It's not her fault she's drawn that way. She can't help it. Did I just quote Roger Rabbit? Natsuki? Uh, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Yeah. She, she's just trying to make you look bad. It's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point... What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? It sells better? The meaning should jump out at the reading, not reader, not force them to have to figure it out. No, that would take time and effort that the reader does not have. Help me explain that to her, Ash Ketchup. There's reasons we have so I should have just call myself Santa Claus at this point because I could have used my Santa voice there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language it's the only way to convey complex feelings and meanings the most effectively yeah I don't know about that uh, avoiding them is the only unnecessarily limiting yourself it's also a waste yeah I understand that apparently I don't understand that uh, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? You joined the Lit Club, man! This is what happens! You join the Lit Club, you gotta be prepped for this. It's not like I know anything about writing. That's obvious. We haven't even had to actually do writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be Natsuki, or Yuri, or Help Me Sayori. Help Me Sayori? Like, literally? Natsuki. Claire's at me drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. I had one choice to make in this entire game, and I chose poorly. I, I do not get to have the Holy Grail now. Sayori? Eh. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Well, that's her problem. I agree. It's unfair to others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell- My god, this class is just full of some mean girls. They are just- This is- This is, uh... Oh my god, this is- They're the plastics. This is mean girls. I'm gonna make fetch a thing. Who would that be? That's Nat. Natsuki? You are Gretchen Wieners. Uh, yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would not Oh, the music's back. Yay. It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? That is exactly why, exactly why nobody likes you. Stop! Natsuki. Yuri. Oh, cool, we got an acoustic guitar in here. This is great. Now we're at the camp, sitting around a campfire, having to sit down, chat with the camp counselor. You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. I want rainbows and sunshine and butterflies 
and I want to ride a unicorn that farts rainbows and marshmallows. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their dif differences. I thought it was defenses for a second. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. They're word paintings. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Come on, guys. Dude, why are we fighting? We're all in this wacky thing together. Lit Club is hard enough as it is, man. Be because also, Natsuki's cute, and there's nothing wrong with that. You said it, not me. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. I didn't I I didn't think they literally redrew it. Because I, I showed up. Big and beautiful. Sari, is there anything you want to tell us? I feel like maybe I'm the third wheel here. I feel like this is maybe something all of you have to deal with, and maybe I'm just kind of here. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off, and Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. <laughs> so the status quo is preserved. So this is why Sayori is vice president. Because you, you didn't really do anything, Monica. I whispered to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. That's actually like a big quality that leaders have to possess. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing for me. Uh huh. Nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess it just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. Are, are, are we going to have a changing of the guard? I feel like there's a political coup. Oh, secret spy ring. Nope, definitely not that. Damn. Damn, none of my none of my theories are bearing out and I'm feeling very bad about it. She might be an airhead. But sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. That is suspicious actually. Maybe we should have her investigated. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. Did we get married or something? That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to nod. Such a genuine person really does make a good present, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Yeah, that's really what this game needs more of, talking. Or uh, reading what people say, that would be great. We need more of that. So, so much more. I need it. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. Oh, good, we can leave this class and finally go accomplish something. How did y'all feel about sharing poems? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right, well, mostly. Ash Ketchup, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same thing. <laughs> this is not worth it. This isn't even a reading simulator right now. It's just a clicking simulator. I don't know why. It's a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. Nope. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself. Nope, nothing up there. I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. 
With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing them. I nod to myself with newfound understanding and love and caring. Ready to walk home? Oh, right, because I gotta walk home with you now. Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori. About what happened earlier. What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. <sighs> that thing happened often? No. Because I don't really even understand if this lit club's been around for more than three days. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I just... I just wanted your opinion. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. You know, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. Well, they are apparently programmed that way. Uh, that's... Uh -huh. Every day is going to be so much fun. It looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. Dude, you're just... you're trying way too hard, man. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. <laughs> wow, that's a pretty bold move there, kid. I pat her on the shoulder. I don't know. Nope, you... I think you just put yourself in the friend zone. I think that, that that just happened. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometime. She really should just be like, hi, my name is internal monologue. Okay, yeah, let's do this. What are we doing? Oh god, I gotta pick more words. Okay. I'm going with what I was going with before. I'm going to find the scariest words because this is supposed to be a psychological horror game. Right? Like, that was supposed to be the thing. Where is the other girl? She's not even... Oh, oh, Monica's not even in here. So, is Monica just off the table altogether? I guess Monica's just not even involved in this. It's just the other three girls are hopping around in little paper paper mache thing. I like the fact that it's like, yeah, there's four girls. There are only three up here here, so don't don't get too attached to the other one. The other one's not really that it's tangential to this whole thing. <clears throat> okay, scariest word. We're playing the scariest word game. Uh massacre. Nope. Not not the scariest word. Uh puppy. Mm, all about that. Uh playground oh yeah man I knew a kid he died on the playground but of embarrassment and it was me uh, bouncy comfort sunset um, hop infallible um, the scariest word is sunset because who knows if the sun will ever come back up um, milk and poof. Oh, wow, they're putting all the good ones in together. Uh, but for this one, uh, I'm gonna say, um, that, uh, the scariest thing is, uh, is to atone. Because atoning for one's, uh, sins and foibles is truly one of the, the scariest things you can do in this life. I've tried on occasion and have subsequently failed. Okay. I will probably have to atone for this when we are done with the stream. 
and I will have to atone for strangling Alex for saying, dude, you should really do this stream of this game on our Twitch stream. The first time we've ever used our Twitch stream so that I can click on words. Thanks, Alex. This is, this is a great use of modern technology and I appreciate it. Swimsuit inside. Oh, anime is pretty terrifying, but I saw a swimsuit. Body image issues, man. I got some. Uh, okay, intellectual. Oh, that is scars. Scars might be a little scary. Fear and wrath would be scary, but I'm gonna say the scariest thing here is cheer because I think of cheer squad and that makes me think I gotta be at the top of that pyramid and uh, chances are uh, that will end in disaster as you can see so that can also lead to scars um, and that is also something that causes fear and may uh, bring a lot of judgment and uh, a whole lot of wrath even though you're supposed to be playing and holding ribbons and, uh, and you were supposed to be an intellectual when you went to school at the first place, and uh, then you fall on the floor, and it's all wet, and then you become shiny. See, it's all interconnected, man. Cheer. Marriage. Scariest thing on this list is... Um... Fluffy? Because I think of Fluffy Tales Bookstore and how no one is probably ever going to visit it again. And that makes Blaze very sad. Uh, email I did last time. And I don't, I don't want to repeat myself. I want to do something marshmallow. Nope. Did marshmallow last time. Um, I am going to say that the scariest thing here are fireflies. Because what if they're made of real fire? Yeah, dude. Dude. What if you're wearing something flammable around fireflies? You never know. Color. Disown. Music. Landscape. Peace. Misfortune. Hopeless. Um. Uh. Vanilla. Because uh, if you get yourself Neapolitan ice cream, it's the least interesting flavor. And that is scary. Why would you be sandwiched between two other uh, really tasty flavors and be vanilla? I'm vanilla. I am, v I am the vanilla in the Neapolitan of, of tabletop gaming, podcasting, Pretty much everything. I am, I am the vanilla. I have come to that conclusion. Oh, the scariest word here is absolutely unrequited. Live it, live it. Um, uncontrollable universe anxiety, unrestrained heart. Uh, fireworks, electricity, heart. Heart's a scary word. Um, because, uh, uh, you know, heart ache, heart attack, a lot of, a lot of really scary things revolve around hearts. Um, you can get your heart broken, uh, you can, uh, have a heart murmur. I'm going with heart. Uh, after image. I think I'm scared of that just because, um... Because that's a that that's a tricky word. Oh, heartbeat. I feel like I'd be going with a theme there. Uh, chocolate. Because vanilla is always riding your ass about stuff. I'll tell you. Um, after image, I guess is that what that is? Because I I do hate the after image I see in pictures. Um, scariest thing here. Nightgown. Yes, because body issues again. I can't pull it off. Um, headphones? No, that's that's a good one. I like that. 
Explode? Explode's pretty scary. Promise. Keeping a promise. Oh, no, I've done that before, haven't I? Um... Uh... You know the scariest thing is that if these choices literally don't even make any difference to the story, then the only thing I'm actually accomplishing doesn't even matter. Um, we're going to uh, take Explode, because I feel like I'm going too soon. The uh, scariest thing here is uh, Disarray, because uh, OCD. Uh, the scariest thing here is, uh, loud, because I just want to sleep, damn it. Um, uh, scariest thing here, it's still Doki Doki. Absolutely. Uh, and let's see here, we've got, um, uh, Starscape? No, um, uh, happiness. I'm, I am scared of happiness, so I'm gonna go with that. Happy, I'm, I'm scared of success, and I'm scared of being happy. Uh, I am also uh, scared of uh, nature, because there are bugs in nature. And I'm scared of tragedy, obviously, and, and being held captive. I, I, am, I am scared of that. Um, I'm scared of when people smile at me. More than kiss. Kiss, you know, that's good, but when people smile at me, like, why? Like, what is that about? It makes me nervous. So, a smile is the scariest word here. And then finally, um, jump. How high? Right? Um, treasure, sparkle, time. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, the scariest word that I could see here is uh, probably. Uh, rain clap? Rain keeps falling on my head. Jump. Jump is the scariest thing because that makes me, uh, that reminds me of, like, uh, Fizz Ed. And, um, and that time that a, a girl, like, uh, uh, punched me in the gut, uh, while we were doing exercises, and I got the wind knocked out of me, and, um, and, uh, and I thought for a second I was going to die. I don't know how that actually relates to jump now that I think about it. It actually probably has a lot more to do with shame. But I'm still gonna pick jump because there was probably jumping. I was jumping for joy at the end. That's not really scary then, is it? Um, screw it. I'm going with it. Oh, I jumped once and I hurt myself. It's a lie. I try to avoid jumping because it's scary. That's why I picked. Okay. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Ash Ketchup. Yo, Sayori. Wow, we're really getting comfortable. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Uh-huh. Just still not used to being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing uh, to get you in a good mood, but it's always the simple things. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? Can I get out of this background for five seconds? Is there a cafeteria background? Why don't we take a look at your purse? Yeah, yeah, no, that's forward. Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just want to look at... <laughs> Dude! That is... That is a really creepy thing. Nervously, what you... Don't, don't let him look in your coin purse! She fumbles with the latch to get it open. You don't have to! Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Aha! Uh -huh. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. 
you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. Ha ha! So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're actually an alien in disguise. Oh, you're always hungry. This is the most boring horror game I've ever played in my life. And so that only leaves one option. I give up. Uh, don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Yuri suddenly giggles. I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Hi, Yuri. I wasn't listening or anything, it was just something in my book. Tell him to let me borrow uh, some money. Don't get me involved like that. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford, and frankly, after pushing mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. I don't know how much more of this I can take, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> oh my god, there's so much reading. <laughs> How long is this game? I'm only on day three of this book club. As I sit down here in the ice locker that is the basement. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no reason you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad. And now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside us all, isn't there? Uh-huh. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes! You're right. I absolutely, absolutely came for the cupcakes and absolutely nothing else. Of course, it would have been nice if they actually drew the cupcake so I could see how wonderful that cupcake was. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori! Whap! I love the foley work there. Uh, yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was, eh? A cookie? The sound, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Uh, <laughs> Sayori glances around. Is, is this a miracle? Is this real life? Is that a double rainbow? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. I was gonna say. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. It's the, it's the opinionated uh, younger one. I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. I was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Uh-huh. Natsuki! That's so nice of you! These girls have a very strange relationship, like an interpersonal relationship with each other. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. They also apparently have a very strange relationship with baked goods. Jeez, just eat it. Thank you, my avatar in-game. 
Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Show good! Show good! Mmm! Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! Sayori's all over the place, man. Uh-huh. You're going you're going through a lot over just one cookie. Yep. It's amazing what we'll do for a cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Uh, now I want a cookie. What did you do? Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers, but yours is chocolate. Yeah, well, why do you think I gave you that one? Yeah, I wasn't gonna give you the good cookie, I was gonna give you the crappy cookie. Fine, still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Uh-huh! Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. We don't have the animation for that. Uh... Nope. Uh, we don't. Uh, cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Okay, Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, did you seriously just do that? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Ha, huh, that was a really... Strange interaction with a cookie. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh, Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Yeah, that's a good question. Where is Monica? Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular. We established that. You don't think she... She has a... I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. There you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after... Oh, after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind about that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of lost track of time. Ha. Huh. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, I don't really. I kind of started recently. It's always... I've always wanted to learn piano. Oh, good. Now we get to talk about piano for an entire scene. That's great. Well, he had cupcakes, and we had anime, and then they gave me a lit lesson, and now I, I, there was cookies involved. So yeah, let's talk about piano. Yeah, let's play something for us, Monica. It's, uh, Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yeah, we wouldn't want to do it now. That would just, you know, spoil the mood. That sounds cool. I also look forward to it, because it would be something different than reading what you're saying. And if it was an actual piece of music, that would be cool, too. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Ash Ketchup. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah! I didn't put any pressure or anything. Ah! ah don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So I didn't miss anything, did I? 
Not really. Except that whole wonderful cookie fiasco. Yeah, it was a pretty great thing. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous excavate. Oh, apparently. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has settled down. Sayori has finished her entire cookie, and Yuri is back, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. This is... This isn't a lit club. This is like the anime version of the breakfast club. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. Oh good, do we have less talking this time? How can... How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We are probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm? Well, we can't give up. The festival is our only... Oh, good, there's a festival! Is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, because literature sure shines once you put it in a festival. It's a great stand-up thing to do. It, it translates really well to talent shows. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. No! And it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone something that speaks to their creative minds. Mmm! Cookie! Oh, no, not cookie. That doesn't solve the problem, though. What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will, no, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. Boy, that, that kind of says it all, doesn't it? So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place. <laughs> yeah, how are we going to do that? And after they come, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. Boy, lit, you're really selling people on Lit Club, I'll tell you. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will be will do the trick? What kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Good thinking. We have cookies already. Natsuki would love to do the... Yeah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. Natsuki does make the best cupcakes, and then they have little cat ears on them. And it makes me, makes me think about eating cats. That's what I wanted to do with my entire life. I lived this entire life so that I could eat cat cupcakes. It even has realistic cat fur on it. Natsuki is going to be the crazy cat lady at the end of all of this. Uh, that works out perfectly. I don't know, guys. I'm thinking that, like, by the end of this whole thing, I die. Not my character. I think I do. Like, you get to the end of the game, and it says, by the way, you're dead. And it, like, it pretends to, like, put you in the ground, and then it leaves you alone. And says, yep, bye. Because it happens in the game, it happens in real life. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcake speaks to my creative tummy. I might not make it to the end. Cupcake it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Well, why don't we try and ghost it? <sighs> All of a sudden, I'm inside Sayori's head. Body switch time. It's a Freaky Friday moment. Wah! I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. Oh, is that why she's so big now? I nearly fall out of my chair. Sorry! 
Yeah, you were getting all fuzzy in front of me for a second. Wait! Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Yeah. What's up with that? This isn't a time for napping. This is lit club. We have to start reading before we nap. This is tangential to napping. Does our club... Does our school have a napping club? Good question. You should have asked yourself that before you signed up for Lit Club. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. Damn. I'm so sad. Apparently, I won't have time to actually read things either. You'll get- you'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glanced over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though! Yeah! I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. Aha! It's what I do best! Yeah, you're my rock. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, are you not? Not every day, just most days, and every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? Wow, dude. Just leave her alone. It's a secret. Yeah, you keep your secret, Sayori. I knew it. Come on. You two have a weird relationship. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over your face. Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? Because literally it's a writing club. You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah! I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair. Trying to straighten it out. Dude, Will Forward. Just saying. You're in your friend zone, dude. Just deal with it. Man, you really need to a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just it, there's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. Oh no, it's straighten your bow. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. Says that she brushes her teeth, man. That's a good proper hygiene right there. I mean, really, I wear it as a beauty mark. See, I brush my teeth. Proper dental hygiene. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. I noticed it immediately. I just told you. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I, don't, I really don't care about that. <laughs> There we go. Wait, way to way to really endear yourself is to say I don't really care. Hey, you meanie! I'm gonna put my fingers together really indignantly to show you how I feel right now. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Yeah, let's face it, Sayori. The only measurement that you can give to how successful you are at life is whether you have a boyfriend or not. I think we've established that by now. I mean, come on, Sayori. Get with the picture. Get with the program, man. You need a boyfriend. How else will you determine your self-worth? On your own merits? Never. That's super mean. I agree. I can't believe that, you know, Avatar me said that. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Nope. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind.
There's an image. All right, show me on the teddy bear. Uh-huh. This is so funny. No, it really isn't. It's just awkward and forward. And your hands are not in an appropriate region. Oh my god. I'm sorry, Sayori. This is what this this is the image that they had to draw and not the delicious cupcake scene. I wanted delicious cupcake scene. I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Thank you. Thank you. Preach. Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. You should feel weird about this. This is a weird thing to be doing. I don't care how well you know her. I'm happy we're like this. Ugh. Aren't you? Um, I guess. I mean... I was kind of the one who's initiated the buttoning button gate. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? Uh-huh. It did when I bought it! <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have known sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. <laughs> Perfectly normal conversation to be having in Lit Club. Don't say that out loud. Oh, damn, I just did. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Anyway, you look much better now, so... Ah! Why does it so feel so strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? Well, you know what? We make our own hell, Ash Ketchup. I'm just saying. We make our own hell. But it's so stuffy. It's not worth it at all. She uh, hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Whew! Yeah, we got out of that prolonged image. That's so much better. Sayori so puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? Is it even school policy to have it unbuttoned? I feel like you wouldn't necessarily be able to get away with that. Like, if, if there's a dress code, I would imagine that the dress code also says something about, like, whether you can have a, a blazer unbuttoned or buttoned. I feel like that would be a thing. I don't, I don't know if that's really an option for you. What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he would uh, even let you do things, would, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. That might be for the best. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. So much talk about her wardrobe. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Dude, you really made this the issue. I didn't say anything embarrassing. Just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. Why is there so much talk about sleeping habits, too? It's just all cupcakes and sleeping, isn't it? My god. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. That's what codependency is. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning! Not 
touching that. You're doing it again, Sayori. Ah, oh, but I was just joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems? God damn it. Oh. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to read everybody else's. So trots away to retrieve her poem. <laughs> okay. Uh, who do I want to give this uh, tire fire to first? Um. Well, you know what? Since Sayori and I have such a rapport, why don't we just start with her? Hi, remember me? I was the one who decided to, you know, just button your shirt up because I could. Oh my goodness, this is so good. Yeah, I don't know what it says, but it was probably good. I don't know. I wrote on a dare, especially after yesterday's poem. You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. But it really, I want uh, I want to put this on my wall, like on Facebook. Can I? You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why, because I have no idea what I like either. Ha 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 ha! Jeez, I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Uh, okay, so let's just skip through this interaction a little bit here so that we can get to the part. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an Ash Ketchum poem, and that makes it feel extra special. Like, I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. This girl has issues, man. I don't even know what the issues are anymore, but it's... You're so weird, Sayori. Okay, I kind of agree with that statement. I mean, I, I'm... I still think we you two have a very odd relationship. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. When do I find out that I'm, like, dead? Is that... Is, is there a point where I find out that, like, this whole time I was just dead and this was, um, like a sixth sense thing? But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. Okay. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe... Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. No, I didn't actually ask your opinion or, like, what you like. I, I just wanted to button up your blazer just because I could. And, uh, talk about how it doesn't fit you anymore. That's what I really wanted to do. I didn't want to know about, like, your, your, your thoughts. I've just lived next to you forever. But we never got around to that. And we're in something called Lit Club. So I didn't want to think about, like, what you actually preferred for writing. <laughs> you know, we're wacky that way. You want to write something for me? That's so sweet. I don't really want to. No. Um. I actually have no interest in writing anything for you. I don't know why they're making me spend a lot of time with you. I mean, I get it. You seem nice enough, but you're also, um, kind of spazzy. And, uh, not really, not really buying it. <laughs> uh, happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Told you. Spazzy. Sometimes a little bit of both. Man, you are indecisive. There's a word for that, right? Bittersweet. Indecisive. Yeah, I, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? Happy sad? Sad happy. Sad pee. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, 
sad, sad poem can give the rain cloud a little hug. <sighs> God. Yeah. Sure can. Sure can. My God. And make make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Oh my god. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Ash Ketchup. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Dawn comes, down comes the bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. Oh my god, this is long. Ah, uh, I, I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be th for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. <laughs> Wow, that, that pretty much just sums up how I feel right now. Sayori, did you really write this? No, I got a Ouija board out and took my chances. Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this come from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. Point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm just glad that we actually got around to the writing part in this lit club. I'm gonna keep writing until I die! Unexpected tragedy. Damn moral lesson. Okay, aha! Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. <laughs> I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Um... Yeah, who, who should be next? Uh, I don't know. 
people. I think there's so many people that we could go to at this point. No, technically. <sighs> I actually just got a chance to look at uh, the little uh, thing in in the, the sidebar, and uh, yeah, you know, I uh, I I think. I do appreciate Nathan sacrificing a bit of his soul to go through this because stream is great. Thank you, DC Lassere. If you're out there listening. Uh, and, uh, and Alex trying to explain that that's why it's a visual novel. Yeah, I'm getting that right now. Um, yeah. Uh, why is this considered somehow, uh... Uh, like, it, it said psychological horror. I was prepared for the psychological horror. I still have five theories on what this game actually does. You know there's that thing in Westworld, right? Where, you know, if you get to the center of the maze, you figure out the game. I, I, I'm trying to figure out where this went. I don't know, but I'm going to... Oh, look at the back! It's the fun crinkle tinkles! Okay, I'm gonna go with, um, uh, uh, yeah, screw it. I'm gonna go with Natsuki. Um, okay, hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Somehow this is worse than the last one that I didn't know I was doing. Then I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough, you're still new to this. But I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. <sighs> yeah, but you never really struck me as her type. <sighs> yeah. I... 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 I don't. Sayori has a type all of a sudden. I don't think Sayori knows what she wants. Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? Fluffy. Okay. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Yeah, I I love being compared to dead weight. That was a little unnecessary. Thank you, thank you, me in game. I am not dead weight. But think of it this way: if I, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is. I don't get it. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. <laughs> I love the xylophone, like, solo. Everybody, we're gonna do a xylophone solo now for this. And the, the poem, oh, God. Is... <clears throat> I have to do this like Mary Poppins. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. But... What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. 
It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell everyone. Oh, how lovely. Boy. Nat, you really got issues, man. Not bad, right? <laughs> Quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. No, I need to know more of the thought process that you're putting into this. It's just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. Oh no, I expected so much more. And I feel like I got as more than I thought was uh, so much about spiders. I feel like that was spider-heavy. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Yeah, you know, the thing that you really want to tell your audience is how stupid they are. I've learned that. I've learned that in every project I've done so far, is that what people really want to know is how stupid they are, and you have to tell them directly, like, every single moment of the, t of the day. They really appreciate that. They really, they really love it when you talk down to them. Thank you, Natsuki, for, for being, <laughs> being so informative. Wow. Whatever hair dye you used, I think it went, like, into the brain a little bit there, kiddo. Uh, like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. They like, they like spiders. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my, that doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. <laughs> I wrote it for the lowest common denominator. Let's face it, they're all stupid anyway. They might as well enjoy it. I'm going to get a deal for a reality show when I grow up. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. <laughs> Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid, which is my audience. Who cares about someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I guess I like to dumb things down for people. It's just my personality. Whatevs. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. And also for not liking spiders. Well, you're definitely right. I want a thing where I can type my own responses into this game. Because I would not say this. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. That's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Ooh! Does that go into my damn moral lesson theory? Uh... No. No, I guess not. Not technically a moral lesson. Damn it. One of these theories is gonna be right. Like, conveying emotions is important. Like how I hate spiders. But I want to make people think, not just feel. I mean, the people that I'm aiming this at are stupid, but I really want them to think, just not too hard. I want them to be thinking a lot, but not thinking so hard that they think I'm pretentious, because then that would be too much thinking involved. But they should also feel, like with their heart. Their heart and their brain, even though I'm not technically appealing to either. And I don't, and I think that they're kind of stupid to begin with. Why did I show you my poem? Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Oh god, I can't wait. Can't wait. 
Oh, I don't freaking know, man. I just, just, just sure. Oh. Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Yep. Well done. Your skills are already improving. Thanks. Coming from you, that means a lot. Yeah. It's nothing. Uh, I, I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. You know, you're new to this, so don't, don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. I don't, I didn't care. More daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. A little oil fixes that right up. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. Ooh. Yuri's deep, man. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Yeah, why not? Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands her my, okay. <clears throat> the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. Never, my attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. And apparently narrating my own poem. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feel myself again. You shouldn't feed raccoons. Oh, by the way, raccoons passed an ancient intelligence test. If anyone wants to hear more about that, you can uh, listen to the uh, Orbital Time Warp 2017. They might have mentioned that there was no subject about bread, but you know, plug plug uh, over at delfcast.com. Just thought I would throw that in there. Um, I was a little more daring with that one than yesterday's. Yeah, it, I don't even know if it counts as a poem. I think that that was more just like a story about how you met a raccoon and you had a fun adventure that was very, like, A.A. Milnish in its tone. Uh, I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. Nope, I don't think so. I think it's, it's as literal as you could get. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. Wow. At least they understand where I'm coming from here. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. 
using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. You know, we're just gonna turn that volume setting just a little bit lower there. Okay. Yeah, uh, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. You know, like that time the raccoon came to my window, and it had bread, and it had like a little sign over its head, its head that was like, Want bread now! And I thought that would make a good poem. I should do that. Huh, that's funny! Thank you. I was trying. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh... She did! She's talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She's right! I mean... Doesn't she really feel that way? Yeah! Sounds like you two have that in common. Oh hey, they finally have something in common. That's... that's good. I mean, you two were kind of catty earlier, but now, like, we're all just BFFs. Uh, but I suppose it's my... that's my fault for judging. Please don't tell her I said that. Don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Been there. I... I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. I haven't had a chance to say anything! Of course I'm a good listener! At no point have I actually contributed anything to this conversation! Gee, so many choices. Who should I give it to? I guess Monica, you know, we just clicking simulator here. Uh, hi again, Ash Ketchup. How's the writing going? I, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. Can we get to the point where you show me your damn poem? Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, bloody, 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 bloody. Alright. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Ah, uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are really good something. Uh, that may be the case, but maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Yeah, and in, in, a, in an almost creepy way, I would say. Even if you show it in a different way, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Ha! Could be! How do you maintain that pose for an extended period of time? I'm a little teacup. Kinda. It's amazing. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. This should be the goth club. Uh, but in any case, Sayori's writing uh, has kind of a gentle feel to it. Yeah. It's gentle. Uh, I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. I mean, ha people have more than one emotion. Wow. That's... It's crazy times. I... I can't even imagine having more than one emotion. I'd... I might... I might unexpectedly switch between them. Like, when things happen. In the world. That would be scary. I mean, you are t you are literally one dimension. 
or two, actually technically no, you're literally two dimensional, but you're not three dimensional, because you're just, you're on screen, so, but I mean, having more than one thing is kind of, yeah, shouldn't be afraid to experiment a bit either, but anyway, you want to read my poem now? Yeah, let's get this out of the way, uh, <clears throat> Okay, I don't know what this is going to be, but I'm going to just read it as Moxie Havoc. Because all of these sound like they could have been Sporadica if I just cleaned them up a bit. Alright, I gotta get into Moxie mode. Alright, good. Okay, here we go. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaninglessness. Meaningless. Load me. <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be there or not. But you know what? Touche, game developer. I feel like that's a command. Like, I should hit the button. It's load? Okay. Anyway. Load me at the bottom. Um... Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Load me. It's about a washing machine, I bet. Is it about a washing machine? It's even more abstract than... No, is it about a washing machine? Guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a, a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. Like, because I'm pretty sure that that poem was about a washing machine. Like, a literal washing machine? Uh, I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words could totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. Boy, they all feel like writing is magic, isn't it? So is friendship. According to those ponies. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Just gonna let you sit with it, cause see, I'm gonna space out my lines right now too, be, cause it's really important how you make your sentence structure work. Cowbell. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Sometimes I ask you what poem about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. It's a poem about nothing. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Write about washing machines. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. Like, how long I'm gonna keep playing this game before I start banging my head on the table and asking myself why Alex is evil. When that happens, don't forget to save your game! <laughs> oh, that is awesome. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? 
That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today. So if everyone could come sit in the front of the class. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put anything together in a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. Natsuki, you are just so happy about everything. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori's been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. I thought you heard about it. We're going to be performing. Uh, Monica... Yeah, we're going to have a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone come else come up and recite poems too. Because the rules of Lit Club are, no one talks about Lit Club. Until everybody talks about Lit Club, even if you're not even in it. Sayori's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Uh-huh. Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holding it up for us to see? Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Without consulting the board? Man, she's going rogue, man. Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? No, it's not a bad idea. It's a terrible idea. But I didn't sign up for this. And there's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Especially if they're sharks. If, if, it's, if it's a group of sharks I'm performing in front of, I am out. Is that the twist? Is the twist that these people are actually just sharks? Oh man, I should write that down on my theories. Alright, so theory six. Um, everyone is... Uh, shark. That, that would make it pretty scary. So we have a sick theory now. I've left space for a couple more, just in case. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. Yeah, I overlooked, you know, consulting with people that are going to be part of it. Good leadership, Monica. Good leadership. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of the club. Yeah, the stakes have never been lower. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what, what literature is all about. We, we're reading Rainbow. But with, like, anime. And not, not as good. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Not touching it. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? Don't you want to have the little crinkle tinkles in your head? I know that you want to. It's an ASMR. You just ruffle from feather and little sound, little sound work. I know you do. I know we all do. Not me. And if all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it.
You didn't really have to say that. I could have just looked at the picture and seen how everybody felt. I mean, I guess that leaves me no choice. No, I literally don't have a choice. I, I have been given absolutely no choice in this matter. I, I guess I agree. Because I didn't have another choice at all. Literally, I had no choice. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right! Whew! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Sigh. I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha! Ha. That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Okay. Just for the record, um, the, I'm going to just put under Unexpected Tragedy, I am putting three different marks, because this is actually the third time that I have heard somebody talking about dying or death. So there's that. And I think uh, I'm actually going to put one little tick mark next to Damn Moral Lesson because of that whole thing Natsuki was trying to explain to me earlier about uh, people being uh, ridiculed for things that they like, even though she was ridiculing people about spiders. Alright. Oh, gosh! You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. Oh god, do I have to sit through this too, or is it just going to be narrated out? You have very long nails. Oh no, that's just supposed to be how the light's hitting it. For a second there, I thought you had like those big tiger nails, Monica. But you don't. You don't. Okay. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to uh, per do it in front of strangers? I don't want to do that either. Oh. Sorry. I have to put another theory in place of why this is a horror game. Public speaking. Public speaking is number seven. Okay. Good. Get up. Getting a good list here, folks. We're, 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 getting, we're getting a good list. I still have uh, space for an eighth. Or I could just start a new page. I guess I could do that, too. Can I go next? Uh, of course. Now, let's see. Uh, Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. She stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. She begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Can I have mine on my phone? Is that, is that rude? Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Sounds about right. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. Four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was really good, Monica. Thanks very much. I was hoping to set a good example. You ready to go next, Sayori? Yeah, sure, why not? Why don't you get up there? Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keep your head down, she walk quietly to the podium. The poem is called... You can do it. After image of a crimson eye. I threw some words together. And I, that's what I named it. 
Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. And just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happened when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into a sharp syllables of fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she finishes. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I, it's up to me to save this situation. I applaud, and then everyone joins in, because they love to follow the crowd. But we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, she holds her poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Great. That was really good. Looks like she's down for the count. I guess I'm next. Okay. My weekend. I think that's what it said. Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Try not to think of it when you're reciting to other people. I can't believe I clicked through the title of the poem. It was probably a really important plot point. Oh well. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheerly, cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. As I, if I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't uh, think much of it. But hearing it come out of Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud! Yay! I did it! Good job! Gold stars all around. Even Ash Ketchup liked it. Well, it was okay. Uh, alright, so... Might be that other poems were quite as well with that kind of delivery. In other words, I've seen poems of yours that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Well, I've been practicing, so, you know, just get off my back, basically. Just, you know, uh, I'm trying my hardest, and uh, I don't need your judginess. It's, uh, you know, it's my life, and, uh, you know, I didn't even want to do this thing, but... Here we are. Okay. Who's going next? And what's your poem? Okay. Oh, I get to read a poem? Okay. Uh, despite that, once I finish, I receive applause. Wow, that was quick. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Uh, I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. It's something that'll improve over time. Maybe. Alright then. And that just leaves Natsuki. She begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. Her poem is called... Why are you looking at me? That's actually a pretty good title for a poem. I accept this. Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway. The poem is called... Jump. <sighs> Hold it a second here. All right. I figured I would actually just uh, check our Twitch feed for a second just to uh, see what's going on here. And uh, I've done that. And, uh, so I feel so, so much richer and happier now that I did that. Um, you've, uh, I, I do, we're going to, uh, we, we're going to be ending fairly soon because it's like, uh, after one o'clock here. Uh, but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, the poem is called Jump. 
I just, I need to know how this ends just for my own personal. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she is a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. Words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to her poem. Because she's literally jumping up and down. That was the whole thing. It's a conceptual poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. Better not make me do that again. Ah, oh, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I would think that the, it would be the other way around. You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That's it. I think I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem. Get enough practice before the festival, okay? Because if you don't get enough practice, then you are out of Lit Club. And you will have to bear that shame for the rest of your days. No pressure. I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine. Uh, pleasantly surprised that you're putting all this effort into the club. It makes me really happy. And again with the teacup thing. Great. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. Been working out really nice so far. So I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have a weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. Yay, we can do this. Oh, yeah, we can do this. I'm so excited. All right. Let's stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. Uh, if it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Do, do you need me to uh, button your blazer up or something while we're walking home? Oh, no? Okay, good. Yeah, uh, all right. No, that was weird. I remember that. That was that was a really weird moment, wasn't it? I think we all, we all had like a little bit of a strange thing when the school counselor had a lot to say about it. It's kind of weird. It's kind of adorable. Remember when we talked a lot about spiders for absolutely no reason, and then there was a raccoon? Remember when there was a spider riding on a raccoon in that poem? It was pretty great. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. it must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Ash Ketchup. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's just go. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori has been a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... Uh, I mean... Sayori fumbles over her words. I know, I have that effect on women. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. What would you do? Probably walk home and if that was tangential to... What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Um... Oh, I get to choose? Uh... Uh, I would still walk home with Sayori, or I would walk with, home with Yuri. Those are my only choices, huh? Um. Uh, those are my, those are my only choices. Really? Um. Uh. I... 
Uh, okay. Well, you know, Sayori, we have a really, uh, interesting relationship, but I think that I'd probably walk home with Yuri because I think it's getting a little too clingy right now. Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart bound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? Again, Sayori, if you want... Please, be my guest. I'm not judging. You two... You two have fun. Not gonna say anything. I really feel like the third wheel in this. Or the fifth wheel. I'm the fifth wheel. Don't wanna break up the band, then. That has nothing to do with what I just said. You admitted it! There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. But let's anyway. But I just like to think about it. For long extended periods of time. You know, when I'm just sitting on my bed doing absolutely nothing but scribbling names in my notebook and talking about, you know, poems that I wanted to write that involve cute woodland animals. That. Wouldn't it suck if everyone was a shark? It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? I hope so. I think this is getting to be a very toxic relationship. Need you? Sayori? I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Yeah, there's a lot of cleanup needed in there. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off, and I'm left feeling awkward. Like I have since I started playing this game. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. Classic Ash Ketchup move. When you feel like you're you're in trouble, blame the girl. Good job, man. Gold stars all around. I can't just lie to her. Nope. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Segways are at a premium in this game. Um, who knows what will happen at, in that time? Okay. So I'm gonna just save this game like now in this happy little slot. And uh, then we're just going to go to the quit part. I love how many open save slots there are in this game. There's like nine save slots. I think that there's only nine things you actually do from the beginning of the game to the end at this point. So I don't really know why I need so many save slots. I do imagine that like when we return to this, there's going to be something amazing happen. It's going to be incredible. And I, 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 don't, I don't know what it is, but it's going to be amazing, y'all. And, um... I don't know. I still... For, for those of you at home who are keeping score, um, so far, in my... Uh, let's just, let's just quit, quit here. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes, I do. Okay, um, so uh, for everyone who is uh, currently keeping score here, I just want everyone to be aware, um, in my um, DDLC um, uh, Spooky uh, Theory um, compilation, uh, Secret Spy Ring currently has no uh, strikes on it. Uh, as well as, number two, uh, that it is not like advertised. I think I can completely rule that out at this point, because 
It seems to be exactly what I thought it was. Um, shock scares, haven't had any, so can't really say anything about that. Um, uh, it only seemed to try and teach me one moral lesson, so I guess there's that. Uh, but three times I got the inkling that there could be unexpected tragedy. So, I guess uh, that's probably in the lead there. That's number five. And then the two that we added tonight uh, for everyone's edification is uh, that everyone is a shark and public speaking as the real terrifying thing. And I can tell you uh, that uh, the public speaking feels like it's going to be almost inevitable, just hasn't cropped up yet. And everyone is a shark, purely speculative, but uh, also still viable. Okay, uh, so that's where we're at right now uh, as we complete our very first Twitch stream. I wanted to just say, too, before we end, uh, that I hope anyone listening to this uh, appreciates uh, what we tried to do here, uh, that this is the first time we've actually done a Twitch stream at all, that this channel has only been up for a very short amount of time, and we're not really pros at this. So um, hopefully uh, you did enjoy it uh, if you are listening. And, uh, if, uh, if you didn't, I can't help you, man. I just can't. Uh, but thank you for sticking with us, and, uh, thank you for trudging along with me through Doki Doki Literature Club. I have no idea how far in the game I am, and I have no idea what the future holds. And I'm kind of scared to think about it. But but here's where we're at. Uh, I am in a literature club. And there are four girls. And they are cray-cray. And, um, and they're all the options I really have. Anyway, thank you for joining me. And, uh, I need a stiff drink. Uh, yeah. Okay. Bye now.